Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. Thanks for watching this video. Today we're checking out this brand new power station. This is the SeaTechy GT500. And with this LED light bar on the top and uh, two wireless charging pads, it kind of looks a little bit like Wally to me. Now this comes in with 518 watt hours of capacity and it has lithium iron phosphate chemistry. So you should expect around 2000 life cycles on this power station. Now the thing that really sticks out about this power station is the price per watt hour. You can pick this up right now on discount for $339, which means you're getting around 65 cents per watt hour, which is really good. Now let's go ahead and do some extensive testing to see if that's worth it. In the video, we're going to find out if this supports pass-through charging, if the DC output is regulated, if it has any weird auto shutoff settings, and how efficient the AC inverter is, and basically how much power you should expect to see from this. Now, if you guys wanna see all that information about this power station, stay tuned and we'll talk about that. If you want to just jump to the end of the video, you can also view my new power station grading system, where I'll give this a score of one to 10 based on how well it performs, and you can also see how that stacks up against all the other competition. Hope you guys are excited. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now let's go ahead and jump into the testing on the AC inverter. Now it is rated at 500 watts continuous or 700 watts peak, and it is a pure sine wave. I have my oscilloscope plugged in and we are getting a pure sine wave output sitting at 59.7 Hertz. Now there are two AC outlets on the right side of the power station that share the same grounding hole here. And when you want to turn on the AC inverter, you press this button for three seconds. And after you press that, you'll have a red light that turns on to show you that it's enabled. Now the voltage output of the AC inverter is right around 114 volts, and of course we'll test this under a load as well. Now the first AC test we'll run on the power station is to see if it can handle a max load of 500 watts for 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the load and start the timer. Okay, so the load's been going for about a minute and a half. We're pulling 532 watts. Okay, so we're checking in at the halfway mark, 7 minutes and 30 seconds about, still sitting at 115 volts. I like how this has a temperature meter. You can see we're up at 30 degrees Celsius. The fans are doing a good job holding it there. Okay guys, we just hit the 15 minute mark. We're still pulling 530 watts. Voltage is still at 115 volts, so no issues here. It looks like you're able to pull max power for a 15 minute time period, no issues whatsoever. Now the next test I wanna run on the AC inverter is to see if we can get near that 700 watt peak. Okay, let's turn on the AC inverter. Okay, 630 watts. Okay, it looks like it shut off right around the 20 second mark. So it can handle a little bit of peak power, but it appears after about 20 seconds, it's gonna shut off. Now in summary, this is a pure sine wave output. It put out around 115 volts AC, and it was sitting at 60 Hertz. We were able to pull a little bit over 500 Watts for 15 minutes, which was really good. Didn't see any other issues with the AC inverter. Let's go ahead and do a capacity test to see how much power we can get. So I charged up to 100%. We're gonna take the battery from 100% down to 0% and see the actual usable watt hours you should expect as you use this power station. Now this power station is rated at 518 watt hours. We're discharging at about 113 watts through the AC inverter and this meter here will track all the power that's going through. Now I'm hoping for about 85% efficiency. Let's see what happens. Okay, so the test just finished. The power station shut off when it hit 0%. Now the test ran for 219 minutes and we pulled a total of 420 watt hours. So if you use the power station from 100% down to 0%, expect around 420 watt hours through the AC inverter. Now doing out the math, 420 divided by 518 gives us 81% of the rated capacity. So not quite 85%, but 81 is still acceptable. Now let's go ahead and talk about the screen on the power station. So you'll see it's not flickering. I've adjusted my camera shutter settings to match the refresh rate of this screen. So this is what it looks like in real life. Now right here at the top, you have this battery icon. They'll tell you how full or empty the power station is. It does have quite a few notches, but we're missing an actual battery percentage. So we can't see, you know, 98% full or 35% full. You can just look at this icon here. Now, another cool thing is that it does have this internal temperature of the cells inside. So you can see if it's overheating or if it's too cold inside to charge. You have a large input wattage here and a output wattage here. So you can see what's coming in and out of the power station at the same time. However, you are missing a estimated time remaining. So say for example, you're pulling 200 watts, you wouldn't know how long that would last at the you know, remaining capacity. So I'd like to see that, but it's missing on this power station. 
Now at the bottom you have these icons that tell you what's currently enabled. So if I push this here, you can see we turn on the USB-C, the USB ports, DC output, and we're currently wireless charging. Now the last thing you'll notice is there is a lightning bolt here that will turn on if you're dual charging to indicate it's charging as fast as it can. Now overall the screen is very bright, it's very easy to read uh, whether it's at night or in the day and I don't really have any issues with it. The only two things that are missing are the actual battery percentage and the estimated time remaining. Now there are four USB ports available on the power station and you turn them on and off by pushing this button. Now you have three standard USB-A ports that support 2.4 amps each. These are not quick charge ports, they're just standard USB-A ports. Now you do have a USB-C power delivery port that supports input and output. So you can charge the power station by using this at 60 watts, and you can also charge other devices at 60 watts. I always like to have a bi-directional USB port, so that's really nice to have on this power station. Now on the top of the power station, you have two 10 watt wireless charging pads. All you have to do is put your phone on it and as long as it supports wireless charging, you'll see that it turns on and starts charging. Now the DC output on this power station is super simple. There's only one output. It's this 12 volt cigarette plug with this dust cover. If you wanna turn on the DC output, you push this button right here. You'll see it's enabled on the screen. Now plugging in my battery load tester, you can see it's putting out 13.6 volts. Now I have tested this at 100% state of charge and also 25% state of charge and it's always putting out 13.6. So it is regulated at 13.6 volts, which is a great level of regulation. Shouldn't have any issues running any DC appliances off this voltage. Now I have my battery load tester plugged in, pulling 120 watts. Now the manual says it's rated at 120 watts max, but usually these will go a little bit higher. Let's turn up the battery load tester to see how high this will go before it shuts off the DC output. Okay, we're at 165 watts, 167. And it looks like it shut it off. So you can actually pull 165 watts out of this power station before the DC output turns off. Let's go ahead and charge this all the way back up and then we'll do a capacity test. Okay, so I have the battery fully charged up at 100%. I have my battery load tester here. We're gonna use this to discharge it from 100% down to 0% and see the actual amount of watt hours that you should expect as you discharge this battery. Okay, so I'm pulling a 0.2C discharge rate from the battery. It's right around 103 watts. This will track all the power usage going out of that socket. Let's go ahead and let this run until the battery shuts off. Many hours later. Okay guys, the test just finished. The battery hit 0% and the DC output just shut off. So here are the results of the test. We pulled 454.1 watt hours or about 33.63 amp hours and the test ran for four hours and 22 minutes. So if you discharge the battery using the DC output, you should expect around 454.1 watt hours. Now, if we take this number and divide it by 518, that's 87.6% of the advertised capacity. In the next portion of the video, I wanna see how we can charge up this power station. There are four included ways to charge this up out of the box. Let's see how many watts we get on each one. Now, the first way to charge up this power station is by using the included 12 volt plug. So you can plug it into a battery or your vehicle 12 volt socket and then plug the other end into the power station and you should see around 56 to 57 watts charging input. Now the next way to charge up the power station is using the included AC wall charger. So when you plug that in, you should expect around 115 to 120 watts charging. So this is actually the fastest way to charge up this power station and it'll charge in about four and a half hours using the AC wall charger. Now the SeaTech E500 actually has a bi-directional USB-C power delivery port so you can charge up the power station using USB-C power delivery. So when you plug this in, you should expect around 55 to 56 watts charging input. Now the last way to charge up the power station is by using a solar panel. It's nice that it comes with this MC4 to 6.5 millimeter charging cable. Let's go ahead and do a solar demo on this power station. Okay guys, let's go ahead and do some solar testing. I have the Bouge RV 180 watt solar panel propped up because it's in the middle of winter. Now solar conditions are pretty good today, a little bit of haze, it's right around 30 degrees. Now that we got everything set up here, I have my 12 gauge wire running inside. Let's go inside and hook up the power station. Okay, so I just plugged in the solar panel. We're seeing 100 watts to 101 watts in on the SeaTech E500. Now in order to break down the power input, see we're getting 21.16 volts in and around 4.77 amps. So that's right around 100 watts like we're seeing on the screen. Pretty respectable for a small power station like this. Now I am over paneling this with a 180 watt Bouge RV rigid solar panel and it's working just fine. Also at 100 watts this should charge up in about five hours. 
Now, of course, I had to test if this supports dual charging. So I plugged in the AC wall charger and a USB-C charger at the same time. We're getting 175 watts input, which is really cool that this supports dual charging. So when you charge it this fast, you should be able to charge in a little under three hours. Now, unfortunately, it does appear that the AC inverter is disabled when you try charging. So full pass-through charging is not supported on this power station. For example, I have a 200 watt heater plugged in the AC inverter and I'm charging my Energizer 320 off the DC output. You can see both outputs are enabled, but when I go to plug in the charger, you can see it disables the AC inverter. So whenever the power station is charging, the AC inverter is shut off. Now that also is the same case when you charge with USB-C power delivery, the AC inverter is also disabled. Now, one thing that I always like to test on these power stations is to make sure that they don't have any auto shut off features. There have been a few power stations in the past where if you plug in something to the 12 volt output, after four hours, it will just turn it off so if you're running a 12 volt compressor fridge like this, well, your food would spoil. So I just wanna make sure this one doesn't have that feature. So I plugged in my Iceco Go 20 12 volt compressor fridge into the DC output. I'm gonna go ahead and let this run 24 hours, maybe a little bit more. I'll check on it every now and then and we'll see what happens. Many hours later. Okay, so it's been about 32 hours. I came down here and the 12 volt compressor fridge is still running. Now the power station's sitting around 35% remaining capacity, so you should be able to run this for a little bit longer. Now this is good news, that means the DC output doesn't automatically shut off. So if you're looking to run a 12 volt compressor fridge or just something else off the DC output, it should run until the battery hits 0%. Okay, so those are the testing results. I just have a few more things that I wanna talk about before we jump into the grading aspect of this power station. So first off, this weighs 15.4 pounds, and there's this really nice handle on the top that's built in. So you still have this flat surface to stack things on, and you can also grab it. So a really cool design on the handle. Now on the front of the power station, you have this diffused LED light. There are four different modes. There's a high mode, a low mode, a strobe mode, and an SOS mode, and it does a pretty good job lighting up the area in front of the power station. Now for the build quality, it is built entirely of plastic, and on the bottom of the power station, you have these rubber feet that keep it from moving around. Overall, I like the size and form factor, and I don't see any issues with the build quality or the design. Okay guys, we're to the important section of the video where we actually give this power station a grade based on how it performed in all the testing. We also wanna see how it competes against the other power stations on the market, and you'll see that in the spreadsheet. Now, this grading system is a brand new system I've set up last week, and I put out a separate video on it. Now, it did receive a lot of great feedback from my viewers, and I applied a lot of those changes. Let's go ahead and jump in and see how this one did. Now, let's go ahead and break down the score for the SeaTechE GT500. Now it did score 7.66 points, so it's tied for third place between four other power stations in the 500 watt hour bracket. Now this charged in under four hours if you apply dual charging, so no issues here. If you remember, pass-through charging is not supported, the AC inverter is disabled, so we had to take a point off there. It does have a pure sine wave inverter, so no issues here. It does have a regulated DC output of 13.6 volts, so no issues here. It does have a informational display, now there are a few things missing, but I think the information is just enough to get by, so I'm gonna mark this as a yes. There are no auto shutoff settings, so you can run a 12 volt compressor fridge just fine or any other output on the DC output. Now I did update the USB scoring weight here. There are 0.33 points available for each option. It does support USB-C power delivery, so that's 0.33 points, and it does support input output, so that's an additional 0.33 points. However, it does not have a 100 watt output, so we're gonna take off 0.33 points. Moving on to number eight, does it meet 85% of the rated capacity? Yes, it gets 87% on the DC output. And number nine is really hard here. I have to put a line somewhere, right? So the line is, does it charge in five hours off solar? And it doesn't, it takes 5.12 hours to charge. And so if Ctechi, you know, had this charge at 110 watts, this wouldn't be a problem, but we only see 100 one watts max so it takes over five hours to get a full solar charge and i chose this because you get around five good solar hours in a day so i want to test it to make sure that it can meet that threshold and the last grading point number 10 is the price per watt hour which this comes in with a great price per watt hour at 65 cents per watt hour so you can compare it to the other power stations in this bracket 
Now you can see there are four power stations that actually graded the same score here and they all graded it for different reasons. So if you're interested in the other power stations here, feel free to check out this spreadsheet. It's down in the video description. Okay, so there you have it. Not a perfect score, but it actually did really well. Now that grading system is supposed to be pretty strict so it can, you know, filter out which one's the best power station. Overall, uh, I think the biggest downside to this power station is just that the AC inverter is shut off during charging, so it does not support pass-through charging. And it has a little bit slower of a solar charge compared to some of the other better power stations on the market. I really would have liked to see at least 120 watts, maybe 115 watts solar input, but it was capped at 101 watts. Now for the price, you can't go wrong. Now some of the other power stations are, you know, almost 100 to 150 dollars more than this so if price is your most important factor then you may want to factor that in and go with this affordable power station now what did you guys think about this power station how did it stack up in your mind was the grade a favorable grade was it right to give it that score or should it receive a lower or higher score let me know what you guys think is this a power station you would go for overall i'm pretty happy with all the results anyway guys thank you so much for watching the video super excited for other videos in the future hope you guys are too we'll see you guys in the next one